96.7 FM, WORX. Good morning, and thank you for tuning in. It is 9.06 AM here on Telegraph Hill, 34 degrees outside, under clear skies, and it is the final Tuesday in the month of October. The final Tuesday means it's time once again for Cop Talk. And joining me for this month's program, as always, is Jefferson County Sheriff John Wallace. Sheriff, thank you so much for coming on the program. Hey, Jay, it's always my pleasure. I'm a Looks like I'm a solo act today. Huh? And it is, yeah. We're looking like a solo act. A shout out to... Madison Police Chief Jeremy Perkins and Hanover Town Marshal Josh Taylor couldn't be with us today, but they're busy guys. They're off doing their duty. Yep, we understand. Th- yep, things come up, so uh, we'll uh, we'll pinch it for them today. And we'll go ahead and a quick shout out actually to the Hanover Police Department. Uh, Josh Taylor calling us here with an announcement real fast. The Hanover Police Department will be out at Southwestern Elementary School tonight. Obviously, tonight is Halloween. Trick or treating is from 6 to 8 p.m. for both the city of Madison and the town of Hanover. The Hanover Police will be at Southwestern Elementary handing out candy, doing a meet and greet with the officers from 6 to 8 p.m. Sheriff, I know we talked about that a lot of times that for, especially for the school resource officers in particular, but you appreciate those opportunities for the officers to be out in a more approachable yeah. position. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Halloween definitely affords us that uh, opportunity to get out and uh, and meet the uh, public and especially the kids on a uh, in a different manner as uh, most times we don't get this opportunity. So it is a good time. Uh, I think know the local fire departments to get out as well. Uh, you know, they're out and about and handing out candy and keeping people safe so we appreciate our local volunteer firefighters as well but uh, yeah tonight's a night's a big night for the kids it looks like the weather's going to hold um, you know there are some safety things that we always want to keep in mind as well right. um, you know one of them being is uh, you know if you're if you're driving if you're out the uh, out and about motoring around uh, just just be cautious slow down take your time as uh, kids do get excited when uh, when they get to go out and about through the to the houses but uh, you know we got to watch for that one darting across the street unexpectedly so uh, so just be cautious if you're out the uh, Halloween's from six to eight, and then we look probably for a good turnout tonight with the with the weather being what it is. So, just be safe. Yeah, definitely. Want, you might want to bundle up, but yeah, like the sheriff said, weather-wise, doesn't look like we have much rain in the forecast tonight. So, no, it's going to be a nice, uh, nice, clear, make, cool evening. But uh, yeah, it'll be nice to, to get out. I think the rain and and even maybe snow showers are going to hold off till later on. So, so it ought to be a good night to to get out and about. But uh, like I said, just the reminders as as we go through every year. Uh, you know, mask if uh, we. Try I'd like to ask you to avoid wearing masks if possible and maybe use face paint. Uh, sometimes the mask will hinder your vision. Um, you know, always be well lit, whether it be reflectors or the glow sticks or flashlights. Uh, those type of things are always a good uh, good item to have with you for, for safety. You know, try to make sure you trick or treat in well lit areas. You know, if uh, people want you to come to their door, usually they're going to have their pumpkins lit and their and their porch lights on. So uh, those are good opportunities to go to, and then know the places where you're sending your children to. And then at the uh, it's very encourage your kids not to eat that candy until uh, until you get home with it and, and you get an opportunity to check it out. So we want everybody to go out and have a good time, but we want them to, to be safe as well. Like I said, law enforcement and firefighters will be out uh, in full force. So. Um, uh, we'll hopefully have a nice, safe, fun evening for the kids. We got a couple people up here at the station today wearing their costumes, so a lot of people definitely looking forward to Halloween. <laughs> yeah, and, but we yeah have a good time. absolutely. Yeah, it's uh, I think it's one of our biggest uh, or bigger holidays now. People really, uh, oh, yeah. really get into the Halloween Halloween season, and like I said, it is uh, it is fun and it is enjoyable. But uh, at the end of the day, we want everybody to be safe. We certainly do want everybody to be safe out there. Uh, as we look at your department, uh, what else is new at the sheriff's department? Well, of course, uh, I think you read about it and heard it on the radio about our, our jail study that we're currently underway with. Uh, yeah. I think like a third of Indiana counties are, are looking at expanding or building new jails in, in the state uh, due to overcrowding issues. And uh, unfortunately, Jer- Jefferson County is no exception to that problem. I think as we sit here this morning, we probably have 140 some, almost 150 inmates in our jail. And uh, when the maximum capacity is 108, you can imagine what issues that creates for us. So. It doesn't appear that our, our jail population is going anywhere, and uh, I can certainly see it, uh, you know, a year or so down the road, actually, you know, going up to around the 200 mark. Uh, when I first took over as sheriff, our, our average daily population was 75, and uh, and we've doubled that in, uh, in seven years. So, um, you know, it's good and bad, you know, bad. <clears throat> Bad, that we, excuse me. Bad that we have the issues of, uh, you know, the narcotics. But, uh, but I'm appreciative of the effort that law enforcement puts out day in and day out to, to, to keep it in check and, and keep the drugs off the streets. So, so we are looking at that. Uh, there is a study underway. We do have a committee formed with some councilmen and uh, and commissioners and and citizens as well. And uh, we're taking a look at what our best option is. And, you know, our best option may not be to build a new jail. We're, you know, we're looking at our current facility to see if that's going to be viable. But, uh, you know, if trends continue in this manner, it's it's more 
more than likely not going to be. So, so we have several uh, several opportunities and options that we can we can view, and uh, and we'll see where it takes us. But uh, I'm appreciative of the support uh, that that we have received from the public. I think uh, I think they understand, you know, what we're up against, and uh, you know, I haven't heard any negativity. And but I do welcome any calls if you uh, if you have concerns or thoughts or or ideas. You know, please give me a call and, and let me know what those are. Like I said, uh, sometimes the best ideas I've had in, in law enforcement were somebody else's. So so I welcome those calls as well. But uh, we'll uh, we'll keep everybody informed. It's well we're having the public meetings. They're not private. They're or executive. They're public. So you know, please attend and uh, and give us your thoughts. It's certainly something that you, know, you have to keep an eye on, have to be ready for, and just as as time develops, it's just sometimes changes are needed. Yeah, it, they do, and we, we want to make sure we do it right. You know, we want to make sure that this, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, this jail is going to be expandable and it's going to fit our needs for, you know, hopefully, you know, 20, 30, 40 years down the road. And and uh, we have visited some other jails that have just recently been built. I say we, myself, and the commissioners, and, uh, and my jail matron, Libby Hoffman, have visited other, other facilities. And, and uh, I'll tell you what the... Uh, with the new layout and the manner in which you're building these jails, uh, they're they're pretty phenomenal. I mean, you can really control the area and and see the area, you know, much better than than the old facility. So, uh, and they also give you that option of, of growing. You know, they're basically built in pods. So if you if you need to expand, you can put a new pod on and expand in the future. So, uh, you know, I think we'll we'll probably have the land. I know the county owns land out of JPG. We've uh, we spoke about that quite often, just right inside the gate. And 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 to me, that would be an excellent uh, option to uh, to build a jail. It's uh, somewhat fenced in, somewhat isolated, and uh, you know, it wouldn't really affect any neighborhoods and those type of things. So, so we're looking at all options. But uh, like I said, any input that. Uh, that you may have out there, please let us know. I think that in addition to you know, having to accommodate for more more prisoners coming in, it's also a safety issue just for not oh, only for, not only for the inmates but for your staff. Absolutely, yeah, it's definitely a definitely a safety issue. Like I said, for the inmates and for the staff. Uh, I'm pretty sure our county council, you know, giving us some additional staffing. Uh, you know, we're going to have a total of six more jail officers as we go into the uh, into the new year, so <clears throat> they're very much appreciated and uh, and, and needed. So uh, whether we stay at our current facility or we move on, uh, you know, the staffing issue is something they've addressed, and and, uh, and we're fixing it at this point. But, uh, yeah, a new facility, a much more efficient facility, the way it's laid out, would definitely make for a safer environment for, for all involved. We talk about improvements that we are make, you're making in your department with the jail, yeah, but also just other other things going on as well. Yeah, a lot of shout out and a lot of thanks to my uh, chief deputy Dave Thomas, who uh, sought out and we received a fifty thousand uh, dollar grant to uh, to purchase a an honest to goodness uh, transport van. Uh, you know, quite often, obviously, we transport inmates uh, throughout the state and, and throughout the country. I I think this year we're going to probably close in on almost a hundred thousand miles of, of uh, transport miles uh, just taken in mates to and from so this uh, grant that we received was through the Department of Homeland Security and again it was for fifty thousand dollars it allows us to purchase a, uh, a transport van so we, we did have a van but it wasn't a designed to be a transport van I mean it's open compartment uh, the, the jail officer whoever was transporting uh, was open to uh, you know to the inmate and it just you know just wasn't safe so uh, with this transport van it's gonna be a compartmentalized with video and audio cameras um, so we'll be able to monitor all the actions going on within the uh, within the transport. I think it holds 12 inmates, and like oh, wow. I said, it'll be different compartments in there. So it's also going to save us a lot of mileage and, and a lot of money. Um, as now, if we have to go up north, and we may go up north to pick up an inmate, uh, male inmate one day, and, and uh, then drive right, right by that place uh, the next day to pick up a, a female inmate. Just simple facts of difficult transporting together for obvious reasons. So uh, with this transport van, with the compartments in there, we'll be able to make that in one trip instead of two or three so you know we visualize that uh, you know we'll be able to sweep the state hopefully in one day and, and drop off and pick up rather than making you know two three and sometimes even even four trips so so we're pretty excited about this it's uh, <clears throat> it was <laughs> a lot more in-depth than, than what we thought I mean to, to get this grant uh, is never easy it's a lot of hard work uh, so so we were able to secure that and then uh, and then to find the right van <clears throat> excuse me um, you know wasn't always easy as well so we're excited we should have that on the road probably uh, um, 
late November, early December. So uh, you'll see a new van out and about. It's uh, I'm going to say the Jarvis County Sheriff's Department, but it was uh, paid for by a by a grant that we received from the Department of Homeland Security. So we're excited about that new development for us. Uh, it's a little things, right? But uh, oh, yeah. but they can add up to big things. I mean, as far as uh, safety features go, I mean, like I said, there was a lot of exposure there for the jail officers. So this uh, certainly cuts down on that. Efficiency is important. Safety is important. But I think, you know, like you said, a, a fifty thousand dollar grant and that's uh, from a management standpoint i know you're thrilled about that yeah absolutely it's something that i've <clears throat> been wanting to uh to look into and get for you know my, my uh, tenure but uh, that money is just excuse me <clears throat> a little choked up this morning <laughs> but yeah that money's not always available so it's um you know it's something we went out and saw it and, and uh and was able to receive but it's uh it, it certainly uh, doesn't come overnight it's uh, it's quite a quite a bit of work to get it done and again dave thomas my chief deputy worked really hard on that and i'm very appreciative of his efforts definitely uh, an effort that will go a long way and serve the county well absolutely so. yeah hopefully it's something we'll have for, uh, for years to come and uh, like i said safety is number one but uh, then the efficiency is uh, is also going to make it nice as well uh change gears but continuing with the sheriff's department uh, what's what else is going on with the sheriff's department yeah we're still accepting uh, applications for our jail officer positions as we mentioned earlier that our jail officer uh, force is expanding so if, uh, if that's something that you believe you're interested in you can give us a call and check it out or come down by the sheriff's department uh, anytime between eight and four pick up an application and uh and turn it back in um like i said we've uh hired two already and i think we have four more to hire you know within the next several months so if uh if a jail officer position is something you think you'd be interested in uh you know certainly come down and see us they they work 12 hour shifts and uh they do have a, a three-day weekend every other weekend which they which they seem to enjoy so um that sounds like something that you might uh you know might be interested in come and see us it's uh, certainly not for everybody it's a uh, it's a different feeling when uh, when the door locks behind you but uh, but it's uh, but i'm very thankful for the staff we have they, they they're very dedicated and work hard and in and, and sometimes very difficult conditions so so if that's something you think you'd be interested in come and see us i think that's also something we kind of touched on before when we talked about those openings in the past is that for somebody that might be considering a career in law enforcement this is a this is a good yeah it's a good quote unquote entry level position well yeah absolutely you know some people come as a jail officer and stay and that's great but uh, a lot of the uh, a lot of the younger folks come in as a, a jail officer and move on to a uh, to a police officer's position it is a good uh, training ground for that kind of gives us uh, an opportunity to know you and, and, and vice versa and, and also gives you an opportunity to to see what kind of clientele so to speak you're going to be dealing with so uh, it uh, lets you know if that's something that you would be be able to move into so it's uh, a lot of our officers have have came from the jail staff so it is a good training ground uh, Sheriff Walsh, is something we were just talking about during the break as we continue on the program with you. Um, it's a problem that doesn't really go away, and especially as we get into the holiday season, it's we see a lot more scams circulating. I know we just this past week had something from the Attorney General's office about people trying to get money, and we just want people out there to be careful. Yeah, certainly, especially during the holiday season, it is uh, you know it is upon us, and people will be ordering those uh, those packages. I know uh, two years ago we had a big problem with uh, what they call porch uh, surf where uh, you know people essentially follow the UPS or or who FedEx or whomever delivers your packages back in your neighborhoods, uh, they would wait till they drop it off and leave, and then and then approach that porch and and, uh, and steal the packages. So that's something we need to be vigilant about. If uh, you are expecting a package, maybe have it delivered to yourself at work, or a neighbor's house that, that may be home, or if it is dropped off at your house, maybe have somebody uh, pick that up as soon as possible because uh, port surfing uh, was an issue, and we did have a lot of packages uh, stolen last year. So so just be vigilant of that. Uh, like I said, it is a season where a lot of these will be will be coming to the houses so keep an eye on each other and if you do see a suspicious vehicle or, or individual in your neighborhood you think they may be up to something uh, please don't hesitate to give us that call that's a lot of times what we need to to resolve the issues also our scams continue on the phone um, you know quite often get the IRS scam or uh, the clearinghouse scam or whatever it may be uh, if it's too good to be true it more than likely is to always verify don't ever give any personal information out especially uh, your social security numbers your uh, credit card numbers your debit card numbers uh, they'll take those and run and uh, and they're good at what they do unfortunately very good at it so best thing to do is hang up ignore ignore their calls and, and generally they'll move on to somebody else you know if you do find yourself um, you know a continuous situation give one of us a call and, and see if we can't uh, maybe help you out uh, most often they're they're not even inside the country they're outside the country so once that information's sent it's gone and it's uh it's very hard 
if not impossible to get uh, to get into your loss back so just be cautious um, like I said they're smooth on the phone and, and they're threatening on the phone and whatever it may be but uh, but the government the IRS uh, you know doesn't operate like that so just verify it if you're not sure hang up and, and give us a call and it's like a lot of issues you know you guys don't mind receiving a phone call like that if it hopefully it ends up being nothing but right all it never hurts to call no it's heartbreaking when you see especially somebody that's worked their entire life uh, to save for their retirement and they'll lose a, a portion of it and sometimes all of it and, and like i said it's almost impossible to get back so um like i said hang up just refuse to give it out and uh, and verify before you do anything at all because it's uh, if it's legit they'll understand that but uh, you know you pretty much got to take any call you get on the phone now is, is not a legitimate call call unfortunately and uh, and verify that so just be safe we don't want to don't want anybody to lose everything they work for their entire life or you know th- so like I said, through the holiday season we don't want you to lose that the uh, package that special gift you may have for your loved ones so uh let's just stay on our toes and uh and we'll defeat these guys safety is definitely the most important thing and definitely want people to be vigilant about that um as we come up on the end of the program anything else you'd like to talk about sheriff yeah shout out i just we're sitting here looking at the calendar and realize that uh you know we're gonna go through halloween and uh, veterans day and uh and uh thanksgiving before we meet again and uh you know a shout out to our veterans uh yes just phenomenal people we can't uh, can't thank those folks enough for what all they've done for us and, and the sacrifices they've made and, and continue to make and uh and not only to the vets but you know especially to their families as well i mean there's always somebody home there's a wife or children at home waiting for them to come back and uh and I think sometimes we, we kind of gloss over that, maybe take that for granted a little bit. But uh, these folks are making a big sacrifice for all of us. So uh, so happy uh, Veterans Day to all of our veterans, and, uh, and we sincerely thank you for your service. We certainly do. It's, we, we don't have the opportunity to be here on this show talking right now if we don't have our veterans. Absolutely. Yep. Somebody be, would be monitoring what we're saying and, uh, and uh, not letting us say it. So, yeah, thanks to them. We have that freedom. Of course. As always, Jefferson County Sheriff John Wallace joining us for Cop Talk. Sheriff, thank you so much for coming on the program. Yeah, we pulled it off, AJ. I covered for three, right? You <laughs> certainly did. We were a little, he, was, he was a little worried at the beginning of the program. He'd be able to make a program by himself, but I, would I say, had full confidence. Yeah, I would say people that knew me knew I'd probably be able to cover it. But yeah. <laughs> That's all right. Yeah, everybody be safe and, uh, and uh, have a nice Halloween. Certainly. Jefferson County Sheriff John Wallace once again joining us for Cop Talk. <laughs>